Thanks for joining us for another episode of Five Games, Five Minutes from AconElectron.co.uk. Hunchback is another game which appeared on a variety of different 8-bit formats. The Acon Electron had two variants, the original Ocean Software release and a later quote revamped unquote version by Superior Aconsoft. There's barely any difference between the two at all. The idea is to cross a wall avoiding flying missiles, jumping over small gaps in the wall and occasionally grabbing and swinging Tarzan style over larger ones. You're on a quest to rescue Esmeralda, who is housed at the very end, wouldn't you know it. Unfortunately, the Electron version of Hunchback suffers from a very poor control system. Instead of jumping either left or right when you press the correct keys, your character often jumps straight up in the air. As this is a game where you need lightning fast reactions and carefully timed jumps, well, you can see the problem. The graphics are pretty poor, and the game is too frustrating to be fun. The only really nice inclusion is the ability to practice any section of the wall. To Hell in a Hamper is a disc-only text adventure by JJ Guest. It's very, very different to any other. There's no go north, go east, etc. The whole adventure is built around making you laugh out loud as you're playing it. It begins with extracts from your diary, which explain how you become stranded in the basket of a balloon with a man carrying several times his own weight in souvenirs. The balloon's now heading into a volcano and only jettisoning all this extra weight can change its course. From this point on, your task is to strip this man of all of his booty and throw it over the side of the basket. As you do, you get a very engaging narrative. You'll also find his overcoat has pockets and lining to search, and search again, and his hat also conceals the odd surprise too. There are only two real issues with this game. Firstly, it keeps pausing to load from disc all the time. Secondly, sometimes you don't get a message if you type something it doesn't understand. It understands break vars, for example, but not smash vars. However, it's really a fantastic little game, and it includes lots of help for if you get stuck. You all know the format. Do you like playing games like this? Or this? Or even this? Then you might have sent off by mail order for Kansas City's Munchman. Here it is! Let's just size this up against the competition. I mean, what can I actually say in addition? Well, for a start, the Munchman doesn't always move when you press the keys. If you eat a ghost, it doesn't even die. It just gets plotted somewhere else. And because the game doesn't really know whether or not you've collided with a ghost before or after you ate the dot it was standing on, it sort of tries to guess whether or not you've completed a level. (coughs) My God. Kansas. The worst Electron game ever. Eddie Kid's Jump Challenge is a very likeable game. It's built on a feel for handling a bicycle at speed, height and velocity. You're firstly told how much distance, in the form of buses or other obstacles, you're going to need to soar over. Then you have to pedal in one direction. Then you turn around and come accelerating back. If you haven't given yourself enough of a run-up, then you won't cover the distance. But additionally, while you're aloft, the bike needs to be controlled by either rocking forward or, if gravity is pulling it forward already, by leaning backwards. Again, it's all about a feel for the handling of the bike. You start off on a pedal bike with a smallish jump, and you progress to monster jumps on a moped. Graphically, there's not a lot going on. But I have to confess a real regard for this game, because I've never played another game quite like it. And it's fun. P.S. It was brought out in the BMX era of the 80s, and it came with a reflective sticker. Omniscient is a tough graphic adventure for the Electron by Acorn Computing. The instructions tell you to seek the eight talisman of knowledge, but I'm not so sure if they're correct. Certainly there's a talisman, it's there on the loading screen and there in the game, but you're able to visit all the screens within the cave and there's certainly no more of them lying around. Omniscient is an adventure that's counterintuitive. Some objects have more than one use. For example, the wands are meant to allow you to pass through pentangles of the same colour, but at least the white wand also wipes out poisonous mushrooms. How it does so is bizarre though. You need to drop it, then exit the room and return for it to work. 
the movable wall's another oddity. After you've found that you can hold up a falling wall in one location and hold open a link between two sections in another. The lack of a clear objective is absolutely crippling. You have a smallish playing area so you just end up wandering around trying to use all objects with each other and getting very frustrated. It's a crying shame.